Now the Samsung Galaxy M31s comes with a lot of meaningful changes over its predecessor, the Samsung Galaxy M31 in the camera department. Now to my knowledge, this is the only smartphone from Samsung under Rs 20,000 to come with a Sony sensor and that too a Sony IMX682 sensor. So it made sense to compare this phone to the fan favorite Poco X2 which comes with the Sony IMX686 sensor. Now before I even get on with the comparison, I want you guys to go to the comment section below and comment which phone do you think is going to win this camera comparison. And while you're there, do uh, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on any quality tech content from Mr. Phone. Now that you have done that, let's get on with the full camera comparison of the Samsung Galaxy M31s and the Poco X2. First things first, let's take a look at the camera specs of the two phones on offer here. So the Samsung Galaxy M31s features a quad camera setup at the back comprising a 64 megapixel Sony IMX682 sensor with f1.8 aperture. Now the main shooter works alongside a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens with 123 degrees field of view, a 5 megapixel macro sensor and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. For selfies, the smartphone gets a 32 megapixel front facing camera. Now, as for the Poco X2, the handset features a quad camera setup at the back too, however uses the 64 megapixel Sony IMX686 sensor as its main lens with f1.89 aperture. Now, the rest of the cameras at the back include an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 2 megapixel macro sensor and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. For selfies, the smartphone gets a dual 20 plus 2 megapixel front facing camera setup. Now, with the specs out of the way, let's now look at some camera samples. So to test these two smartphones, I somewhat standardized their cameras by turning off AI scene recognition for the Poco X2 and the scene optimizer for the Galaxy M31s. Now despite that, you'll notice that both the phones process images and put emphasis on certain things. For one, almost all the shots of the Poco X2 resort in a warmer tone, so you will hear me talk about how something looks orangish when it shouldn't. The M31s, on the other hand, processes images with a cooler tone, so you will notice how the blues appear more vibrant here. Also, with the SGR turned on, the Poco X2 plays up the hues and darkens the shadows quite a bit, whereas the M31s tries to level things out by bringing out details from both the dark and the bright spots. Now let's start with the daylight white shot from the two phones and here, the first thing you'll notice is the color disparity. Now to be clear, neither of the two phones clicked an accurate image and they're both doctoring the scene a bit. Now case in point, the sky did not appear as blue as the M31S's photo would have you believe and neither do the plants in my garden have such bright green leaves as is highlighted by the Poco X2's photo. But to both the phones credit, the images look tasteful and while they're quite sharp, the one from the X2 is clearly the winner here. If you zoom into the bushes behind the swing, you'll notice how they have much clearer definition on the X2 shot, whereas they appear over sharpened on the M31S's photo. Same goes for the trees at the back, which don't appear as sharp on the M31S as they do on the X2. Another example of the same is the second white shot of my garden, wherein, while the colors in the M31S's photo are truer to life, the details are significantly higher on the Poco X2, which is visible on the shrubs at the base of the tree. However, if you look at the set tree's bark, then you will notice how it appears darkened on the X2, whereas you can see the details in the stump much better on the M31's photo. Correspondingly, while the Poco X2 offers better details, the M31S offers more balanced colors. Now, when it comes to close-ups, both the smartphones are neck and neck, and to highlight that, take a look at the shot of this pink flower. Now, if I remove the watermarks from the two photos, chances are you won't be able to tell one from the other. In fact, the only difference I could see was that the M31S's bokeh effect has a wider spread and it engulfs part of the petals too. Now, this isn't a flaw in the M31S's processing by the way, the phone just creates a wider blur effect. What I will say though is that the M31S's photo offers much better details in close-up situations which is evident if you zoom into our pet's forehead and here you will find better detailing on the Samsung shot and noticeable over sharpening on Poco's. Also the tiles next to brownie's paws are slightly orangish on the Poco X2 but they are represented much more accurately in the M31S's photo. Now this one is a clear and very easy win for the Samsung Galaxy M31S's 12 megapixel shooter. You will notice that while both the photos have noticeable barrel distortion along the edges, the M31S managed to capture a more aesthetically pleasing scene as there is noticeable purple fringing on the Poco X2 shot if you look at the sky. 
Furthermore, the corner details are superior on the M31S2 and if you zoom into the right hand side of the photo, then the decorative fountain as well as the bushes have been exposed much better on the M31S. Now the 64 megapixel photos from both the phones have their own pros and cons, so it's quite tricky to actually choose a winner here. Now while the Poco X2 shot has superior details at the center, which is evident if you zoom into the bark of the tree, the M31S has better corner details, which can be seen if you pan across to the right and take a look at the leaves of the trees which appear smudged on the X2 shot. Now I'll let you guys decide which is the better photo out of the two, so let's move on to the macro images for now. Now make no mistake, the 5 megapixel macro sensor on the Samsung Galaxy M31S is just much better when compared to the 2 megapixel unit on the Poco X2. For one, I found it very difficult to lock onto the subject using the Poco X2's macro sensor. Now, on the other hand, the M31S was much quicker to focus. Also, the details were much superior on the M31S's shot and with the Poco X2, I noticed some haziness around the image too. So yeah, go for the M31S if you want to get extremely close to your subject for photos. Now, up next are the low light images from the two phones. Here, the Poco X2 and the M31S outputted really good results, but much to my surprise, the M31S was a tad better here too. Now, without even zooming into the images, you notice that the shot from the M31S is noticeably brighter and it appears more lively. Secondly, you'll also notice that the smartphone contained flaring from light sources much better, which is evident if you zoom into the lamppost or the house behind us. Also, it was drizzling around the time I clicked the photo and you can make that out from the M31's photo at a closer crop, but not so much on the Poco X2's image. Now with the night mode enabled, both the phones did a fantastic job of bringing out more details into the frame and while the shot from the Poco X2 was brighter, it could have been better. You see, even without zooming in, you can tell that there's something weird going on on the X2's photo, especially around the left hand side. Well, if you zoom in, you'll notice that in trying to squeeze out details from the darkened parts, the Poco X2 has actually introduced a lot of noise as well. So yeah, this could go either way depending upon your preference. Now this is another clear win for the Samsung Galaxy M31s. I've never liked photos from the X2 selfie camera as even with all the beautification features turned off, the phone would still soften my skin tone, darken my hair and make my lips appear redder than they are. The M31S on the other hand clicks a much more natural looking image which offers plenty of details around my cheeks and the strands of my hair don't appear over sharpened here either. While both the phones did a good job at exposing the background evenly, but if you ask me, the M31S is just a better selfie camera phone compared to the Poco X2 and quite possibly the best one under Rs 20,000 as well. Now same goes for the selfie portrait shots too and here you'll notice that firstly, the facial tones are way off on the Poco X2's photo and secondly, the blur effect ate into the edges of my unruly hair. However, the M31S didn't just make my skin appear as it should, but it also made a much tidier cutout around my hair, so if you are into taking portrait selfies, the M31S is surely the phone you should go for. Now when it comes to indoor selfies though, I think the Poco X2 did a better job at composing the shot. Yes, the colors are still quite artificial, but the details are a plenty in the X2's image, whereas the M31S, despite offering better colors, has softened my skin tone quite a bit. On the other hand, Low light selfies were far superior on the M31S and that is with and without the screen flash enabled. The results will be on your screen right now and as you can see, the Poco X2's flash throw is quite short and therefore, the phone could only resolve the details around my face. The M31S, however, was able to pick out the information from not just my face, but my hair and the background too. Now both the Poco X2 and the Samsung Galaxy M31S can record really good videos, but I think the M31S is a little better. But before I talk about that, here are the samples. So while both the images are on par with one another when it comes to the stability of the clips, I preferred the one from the M31S for three reasons. Firstly, the smartphone didn't play up the greens in the footage as much as the Poco X2 did. Secondly, there were noticeable instances of focus jumping on the Poco X2's footage, but the same was not present on the M31S. And finally, I found the audio captured by the M31S's built-in microphone slightly louder too. Now that being said, the Poco X2 offers a ton of interesting video modes like a vlog mode and it also lets you record videos in 1080p 60fps unlike the M31S. So depending upon how bad you want these features, you might want to side with the Poco X2 over the M31S here.
Okay guys, so now we are looking at a rear video camera sample from the uh, Samsung Galaxy M31s and the Poco X2. Now, uh, unlike the Poco X2 this time around, the M31s can't do 1080p 60fps videos, but the Poco X2 can do that. Uh, regardless, this clip recorded on both the phones at 1080p 30fps, so do let me know how the stability is on both the smartphones, how the shift and dynamic ranges as I point towards the sky and how the colors appear and how the background noise cancellation is as well. Finally, let's talk about which of these two phones is better at recording videos from their front facing cameras. So as you can tell, the Poco X2's footage is once again boosting the colors too much and it's also unable to contain the flaring from the highlights when it turned around at the very end. The M31s, on the other hand, did a better job at representing the colors and although it too outputted a video footage wherein the sky was overexposed, there was no flaring here. Oh, and the smartphone can also shoot videos from the front camera in 4K resolution, which is a neat addition. So if you want specifically that feature, the M31s is the way to go. Okay guys, so this is a 1080p 30fps video from the Poco X2 and the Samsung Galaxy M31s. So do let me know how the video quality is from the front camera now. Uh, Unlike the M31s, the Poco X2 can only record videos in 720p 30fps and 1080p 30fps from its front facing cameras. But the M31s can actually do 4K 30fps as well from its front facing camera. So yeah, do let me know how the footage is, which one do you like more. Uh, the audio captured by the built-in microphone, all of that, do let me know that in the comments below. Now, I'm pleasantly surprised with how good the cameras on the Samsung Galaxy M31s are. Now, it's clear that the company has cut some corners. I mean, this phone does come with a year and a half old CPU. But at the same time, they have really upped the ante in the camera department. And between these two smartphones, I would easily pick the Samsung Galaxy M31s because it is just a better camera phone. But guys, do let me know in the comments below which of these two smartphones photos did you like more? Did you like the one from the M31s more or the Poco X2 more? And as always, if you enjoyed this video, do give us a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'll see you soon in our next video. But until then, this is Prateek from Mr. Phone signing off.